When talking about the labor uprisings during World War I, usually the Russian Revolution sits at the top of everyone's mind. However, it wasn't just the Russians that were stirring up trouble in the year 1917, whereas the Russian proletariat were marching in the streets for bread. In the capital city of Amsterdam, the Dutch working class were taking a stand over a certain starchy plant. We're talking about the potato riots of 1917. While other necessities were becoming more scarce since January 1917, food rations and soup kitchens would help quell the issue, but when the main staple food, the potato, became especially scarce, starting on the 28th of June, violence would escalate, ending with over 100 people wounded and 9 people dead. What exactly happened? What events led to this popular uprising? On June 28th, hundreds of working-class women tried to seize a batch of potatoes intended for soldiers. The police intervened, and the women went to the town hall to air their grievances. Potatoes were being exported to not only Germany, but allied nations as part of a trade deal in Holland. Councillor Wiebout assured them that enough potatoes would be available within a few days. When the promised potatoes finally arrived, they proved to be unaffordable to the common worker. They were instead bought by upper-class women. Councillor Josephus Gita pointed out to the working-class women that an extra supply of rice was available to them. However, this was rejected, one woman saying, if I pass that on to my husband, I'll get an earful. On July 2nd, demonstrators went to the vegetable market in Marnikstadt between Ellensgracht and Rosengracht. There, they stormed barges with cauliflowers and potatoes. The police fired at the marauding crowd. In a report on July 2nd, the New York Times reported it as so. On July 1st, the Handelsblad prints a report of disturbances over the supplies of potatoes in Amsterdam. Hundreds of women and youths collected in the Kruiswesch, where a few potatoes had arrived. Only a small portion of the crowd could be supplied. Later, thousands of persons, the newspaper adds, besieged a dock where a small barge with potatoes for hospitals had been tied up. The crowd was driven off by mounted police, but it vented its feelings on the police building, where all the windows were broken. Several mounted policemen were injured by stones thrown by the crowds. The tensions hit their peak in July 5th, with the Sun reporting as so. Reuters correspondent in Amsterdam states that the shortage of potatoes was responsible for another demonstration. Windows were broken in potato storehouses, and a jewelry shop was plundered. Mounted police fired in the air, and the crowd dispersed on a promise being given by the Minister of the Interior that he would receive a deputation on the subject. A section of the soldiers refused to fire on the rioters and were marched off by an officer amid the cheers of the crowd. The market was guarded by troops on Tuesday, and the disturbances were not renewed. Most of the dock workers struck as a protest against the method of distribution of potatoes. Builders' laborers are striking in sympathy. The Burgomaster has prohibited open-air meetings. Later reports show that the riots were much more serious than at first reported. Crowds looted the potatoes from the barges and railway trucks. Battles with the police occurred in the streets. Soldiers came up, but the crowds were defiant. Women bared their breasts and dared the soldiers to shoot. Eventually, the soldiers fired, killing one and wounding many. Three policemen were seriously injured. A telegram states, further food rioting has occurred at Amsterdam. A crowd of women stormed the frozen meat store and carried off four pigs, cutting them up and distributing them. They also plundered the butcher shops. Troops charged and cleared the streets. On July 5th, the New York Times reported as so. The Jordan district of Amsterdam, the Telegraph reports, was invaded yesterday by 300 women from the Kattenberg district, armed with bayonets, revolvers, and stones. A collision with the police took place at the Kaisersgrach. A woman fired a shot but missed the mark. Another collision occurred in the Jewish quarter between strikers and the police. It is reported that a boy was wounded there and died in a hospital. Large quantities of potatoes are arriving, the cars being guarded by police and soldiers. The garrison has been reinforced by strong detachments of cavalry and infantry. The rioting in Amsterdam has been due chiefly to the scarcity of potatoes and their export to England, to which the government is committed under agreements made to preserve its trade relations with both the Entente and Germany.
Four persons were reportedly killed and 19 injured Tuesday night when a mob which was pillaging shops was fired upon. Rioting took place later in the Kattenberg area, a market district. A special cable from The Hague July 4th stated that rioting in Amsterdam, which began with the mere pillaging of potatoes by women, fathers of families, and others, has passed through all the usual stages of political discontent and local labor unrest until finally it has reached pure hooliganism. This last stage, accompanied by the pillaging of shops not containing foodstuffs, has caused the most serious uneasiness and resulted in the dispatch to Amsterdam today of additional troops equipped with machine guns. Except during the first disturbances at Rotterdam, it does not appear that there was any specific anti-English feeling, least of all at Amsterdam. Generally speaking, the Dutch populace is no wise pro-German. The attitude of the Dutch government is another matter. The probabilities are that further disturbances will be avoided now that the authorities have shown their intention of quelling the disorders at whatever cost. The original trouble about potatoes has been almost lost sight of. Large quantities reached Amsterdam for distribution today. It should be pointed out that the disturbances in Holland are not unconnected with the spirit of unrest prevailing throughout the world. There is admittedly some distrust of the government and much political uneasiness. Both on part of the government and the governed, there is a condition of high nervous tensions created by three years of grave uncertainty owing to the proximity of a bullying military power throughout the country the prospect of another winter of war is viewed with alarm. Reading these, you can see a couple differences in the narratives from newspaper to newspaper. However, a few key events are present in all of them. Warehouses and shops were broken into. Police clashed with the crowds until they were fired upon. And strikes were begun in support of the protests. Martin reports put the numbers at 9 dead and 114 people wounded. Dutch history already being seldom discussed, the 1917 potato riots are discussed almost never. However, it is still an important moment in the history of not only World War I, but the labor history of Amsterdam. The food situation in Amsterdam became worse by 1918. Plenty of working-class Dutch people lived on the brink of starvation and unemployment rose. Thousands more died as the Spanish flu began ripping through the population, weakened by starvation. With the armistice in November 1918, the war came to a close, and as such, the supplies could be redirected back to the citizenry. Despite there being little attention on this subject, the 1917 potato riot should not remain in obscurity.